those women in Europe who fell into the Nazis' sphere of interest could only expect to find a few options, two of which still guaranteed life, while other options ended in death in a crematorium, or a pit full of dead bodies. Today, on X War History, we are going to tell you what awaited European women who were captured by the Nazis. Regermanization. It was generally believed that some Polish girls and women could turn into Aryan women if they were surrounded by the Aryan race, and under the influence of this environment would be transformed into true Aryan women. To illustrate this, here is what Irina Yashinska wrote to her relatives. I realize now, the German blood is running in my veins. I love Germany and, if necessary, I will fight for this state. In reality, it was a timid attempt to get rid of the, let's say, Germanization and simply return home. When it became clear that nothing good could come out of it, the poor Polish women stopped deceiving themselves and the SS men, who were watching them by telling how they were locked up without the right to go outside, how their owners were bullying them, and generally that they lived at the level of domesticated cattle. For instance, Kazimira Kachor wrote to her family. Frau was not pleased with my work. She keeps saying that I only smear dirt on clothes. When I tell her that I'm German, she laughs and says it's not true. And Eugenia Wojcik did not pick her words at all, writing categorically to her relatives. I would rather work in a factory as a Polish woman and live in a camp than be a German and a maid. All in all, according to some estimations, about 7,000 to 10,000 young Poles were removed under the regermanization program in 1942 alone. Medical experiments and brothel workers. The Ravensbrück concentration camp appeared in 1939. Initially, German communist prisoners were brought here, followed by German prostitutes. At the beginning of World War II, women from all over Europe, Poland, Norway, Denmark, France, Yugoslavia, and Luxembourg, were sent to this camp. For those women who became patients of Dr. Karl Gerbhardt, there were hardly any options for survival. The sadistic doctor experimented with forced sterilizations as well as organ transplants and bone fusion techniques. For sterilization, women were injected with a certain liquid that deprived the victims of the joy of motherhood in the future. As for experiments, Karl Gerbhardt's specialty was the development of methods for accelerated fusion of torn tissues and fractured bones. As a common thing, Polish women, many of whom had survived three to five surgeries, were chosen as experimental material. Surviving patients were eventually sent to the gas chamber, and then their remains were burned in the crematorium. The reports found describe the fate of the victims of medical experiments at Ravensbrück. January of 1943. Dr. Gerbhardt's experimental surgeries continue. One Polish woman is operated on for the fourth time on both legs. January 18th. According to reports, two Polish women are under surgery again, one for the third time, the other for the fifth time. And if in the beginning some sanitary norms were observed, in time, when the camp was overcrowded and there was a long line to the restrooms, many patients simply died of infections brought in by the doctor. One of the prisoners recalled it this way. I was simply lucky we had surgeries in the beginning and they used clean bandages. When surgeries were in flux, no one followed sanitation. Bandages were used many times. As a result, many people developed infections. Those women who had an attractive appearance could earn exemption by accepting work in a brothel for male prisoners. They were previously fed, conditioned, and even forced to sunbath under quartz lamps. As terrifying as it sounds, the Nazis created special brothels to increase productivity in the men's camps. And there were from 300 to 500 men per worker. One session was no more than a quarter of an hour, and all of this was monitored by specially appointed Nazi wardens. One of the prisoners said this about a brothel, set up by the Nazis, for which, incidentally, even a fee had to be paid. When I went to the brothel, I didn't know anything about women. She asked me, have you ever slept with a woman? That was in fact my first experience and, of course, I liked it. Later I tried to get to that prostitute again, but the brothel didn't work all the time. Sometimes the place had to be cleaned, the women got sick or got pregnant. Once I climbed in the window and spent two hours with her. But mostly the brothels were used by guards and warders, because the prisoners, exhausted by hard labor, were practically incapable of receiving any sexual pleasures. It should be noted that such brothels existed in all concentration camps, from Mauthausen to Auschwitz, and women often consented voluntarily just to get at least more or less human living conditions. 
For instance, Lise Lot B, a former inmate of the Dora Middlebaugh camp, explained her decision as follows. The most important thing was that we managed to escape from the camps of Bergen-Belsen and Ravensbrück. The main thing was to somehow survive. Those women who were sterilized did not become pregnant, but many did. Only German women were allowed to give birth, while the rest had to undergo forced abortions. All in all, about 600 babies were born in the camp during its existence. And those women who during their time in the brothel contracted venereal diseases or lost their attractive appearance were sent back to Ravensbrück, where they usually died shortly afterwards. Another thing which is quite important is that German doctors were also looking for a cure for syphilis, so brothel workers were often specially infected with this infection, and then they tested various medications on women. As a rule, no one survived such experiments. Concentration Camp for Pregnant Women Little is known about this camp, but it existed. Pregnant women and girls from occupied areas of specifically non-German nationality became prisoners of the camp. The camp was established in 1943 in the Czech town of Detrschikov, near the town of Moravska Trebov. The camp was originally intended to house pregnant women and newborns. In truth, pseudomedical experiments were conducted here on both children and their mothers. Czech historian Itka Gruntova categorically disagrees with the official data on the number of victims in the camp. According to the available documents, about 200 children and 18 women died there. The only way to determine the approximate number of victims is to exhume the mass graves, as most of the documents have been destroyed by the Nazis. According to the most conservative estimates of Czech historians, at least 2,000 newborn children alone died in this camp. Itka Gruntova herself is confident that the purpose of the camp was extermination. Young women workers from Eastern European countries were taken to a maternity camp. Unlike other camps of the time, there were no watchtowers, but the purpose of the camp was the same. The designation maternity was simply a distraction, it was an element of the Nazi extermination machine. Experiments on prisoners and their newborn babies were conducted under the direction of the famous Nazi doctor, Willem Schmidt, who both delivered babies, often deliberately infecting women, and killed newborn babies with injections. Many women, unable to endure these experiments, committed suicide. As in the Ravensbrück camp, prisoners were forcibly sterilized and given to Nazi German soldiers, who came to the camp to have the testing by having sex with those women, in order to verify the so-called purity of the experiment. Many went insane or committed suicide after being raped for hours. Survivor Maria Homaschik recalled, For such experiments, girls and young women who were not pregnant were chosen in the camp and injected into their uterus with some kind of drug. Then they had German army soldiers who came there in cars and sexually abused the prisoners. The most striking thing is that even in Socialist Czech Republic, the investigation of this camp did not get underway until 1954. It turns out that one of the former collaborators, the headman of Detter Shchikov, after the war was actively misleading everyone by assuring them that the barracks were intended to house male prisoners of war. It was only after the pieces of paper, documents, came to light and it became clear that the camp in Detershchikov was a death camp for women in labor and newborns. The employees who came to work in the district administration started documenting what was going on here, and they put up a small monument in memory of these victims. To this day, the exact number of victims has not yet been established. According to some reports, at least 1,500 pregnant women passed through the camp, of whom at least 1,050 died. The number of dead children ranges from 600 to 2,000. It is really scary to imagine what kind of experiments the Nazi death machine would have continued to conduct on people if the Nazi regime had not been brought to an end. Subscribe to X War History and also leave a like.